you have heard the history from uh, Natalia, who is here and there. Um, and this is a, a gentleman with, with Barrett's esophagus with biopsies that have shown dysplasia. Um, I'll just talk a little bit about the equipment that I'm using. I'm using a, 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 a Pentax magnification endoscope. Uh, this is the EG2990ZI. Uh, this is a fantastic uh, endoscope, one of my favorite endoscopes, and it's using the, the new EPKI7010 processor. And uh, for those of you that have some experience with the Pentax scopes, the benefit of this endoscope and this processor is that it combines the best of both worlds. And so you have the, uh, the benefit that we've been become used to with the iScan technology, which is post-processing, but now we also have a filter in the tip of the scope, which gives you a combination of a filtering technology, which is the OE, the optical enhancement, which I will show you later on when we're interrogating the Barrett's. And com combining that with the magnification function is, is really fantastic for looking uh, for micro dysplasia, which can inform your decision making. Um, so before we, we get on to the clever optics of the the endoscope and then ultimately the therapy that this patient will have, um, just to, to focus on some of the basics of Barrett's uh, nomenclature and what we, what we call Barrett's and what we don't call Barrett's. And, um, so here I'm using the iScan 1 mode, which you can see if I freeze the function, you get a lot of contrast enhancements. Um, so if we go back just to the Prague classification for, for Barrett's esophagus, we start off um, just looking at the hiatal hernia. So 80% of these patients will have a hiatus hernia. And the key here is to wash. So before we came on air, we've used a lot of mucolytic agents to wash the surface. Um, and then is to define where the top of the gastric folds are. So there's a bit of trauma here from my cap. Um, but you can see here, just uh, if I switch to the enhancement, you can see the distinction between these round sort of cardiac type pits. And then as I pull back a little bit, you see the long metaplastic type tips here. Um, and that is the top of the gastric folds. And in Japan also you have these palisade vessels which can help you to dif differentiate between what is um, uh, stomach tissue and what is esophageal tissue. So we can see here that the top of the gastric folds are probably at about 40 centimeters from the incisors. And then the next thing to look at is where's the diaphragmatic pinch. So a lot of these patients will have a small hiatal hernia. And so the diaphragmatic pinch is down there. So he probably has about a two centimeter hiatal hernia there, which is not uncommon and which is probably why this man has Barrett's. And then the next and probably the, the most important thing, which is, is you need for consistency of reporting. Um, for when these patients come back after therapy so you can tell if there's been regression is the, the C and the M classification, which is the Prague classification, plus classification. And so the C classification is the circumferential amount of Barrett's. And it's important here not to overinflate the Barrett's. Um, and you can see if I freeze this function here, ladies and gentlemen, if I use the enhancement function with the optical enhancement here, there's really no circumferential Barrett's at all. Um, so in terms of the, the, the C, this would be a C0. And then as I just pull the endoscope back again, um, what the M length is the maximum extent of the tongues of Barrett's. And so just pulling my endoscope back here, you can see in the six o'clock position is um, where the most proximal extent of the Barrett's is from the, uh, from the, from, from the, the oral end. Uh, and that is at about 38 centimeters and the top of the gastric folds are 31. So this would be a C0 M3 segment of Barrett's esophagus. So nothing too long. And then the next step really is to just with your white light endoscopy is just to look at the Barrett's. And so what we're going to do is we're going to wash it first. If I'm going to ask for a mucolytic agent, which is Parvalex. And what that helps to do is just to clear the surface layer so that we can then begin to really interrogate the Barrett's to look for any dysplasia. Um, now, I understand that this patient has already had two sessions of biopsies that show low-grade dysplasia. Um, 
And in Barrett's, we know that there's no rush to treat these patients with low-grade dysplasia because the risk of progression is still very low, and it's only up until recently that we've changed our guidelines both in Europe and in the US that in patients with proven low-grade dysplasia uh, that the risk of uh, progression to invasive cancer is as high as up to 20% in the randomized data from the SURF trial. Please spray there. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just using some Parvalex, which is a mucolytic. Uh, and what this does, it just helps remove that surface layer. So all I do is I almost sort of marinate the esophagus here. Go, go, go. And Natalia's helping me out here. And this will just help with the optics of these, uh, this fantastic endoscope. And so all I'm going to do here is just look for any visible lesions, any areas that catch my eye. You can see I have a distal attachment here. And then I'm just going to show you the magnification function of this fantastic endoscope here. So I'm going to just show you, if you look here, ladies and gentlemen, this is just with the iScan 1 image. And you can see this is just with three quarters magnification. You can see these nice intestinal type long ridge pits and this scope has 136 times zoom function um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to try and do a little bit of underwater endoscopy and you can see there's some really good definition of the metaplastic pit so this is normal and then what we're going to do is we're just going to switch to the eye scan OE and again you can see here really fantastic magnification I'm going to zoom all the way in now just flood my cap and then when you get your focal length right, you can really see a lot of fantastic detail of the individual crypts and the, the microvessels there. So this is all very normal metaplastic barrets. And then what you want to do is you want to see any areas that don't fit that pattern, any areas that look slightly irregular uh, in terms of the, the mucosal pattern. And so there's a little area here that just caught our eye when we were off camera, which we're just going to have a look at. Um, and Natalia and I were just looking at this when we were off, uh, offline, just to see that this might be something that catches our eye. But actually, no, this is probably just a little squamous regenerative air area from a previous biopsy site. But you can see with the magnification scope there, just what fantastic resolution we get of the individual crypts, um, down to a cellular level almost. Uh, Natalia, have you seen anything that has caught your eye that looks abnormal? I, I think, uh, my opinion is that there, there are no visible lesions. Yeah, I parent. would agree with you. I'm glad you agree. Um, so what I'm going to do is again, just over here, show you the, the magnification function again. So over here, I think there might be a little bit of low-grade dysplasia, just, just a few areas that look a bit irregular and amorphous. And if you get your focal length right with the underwater chromoscopy, you can really begin to, to see the, 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 the pits in a lot of detail here. So this is the benefit of this endoscope, um, that if you wash the mucosa and you take your time and your patient, you can really get some very stunning pictures um, like that of the, 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 the micromucosa. Um, so really, We've had a good look at this Barrett's, and I, I don't think there's anything to worry about. And so the consensus now in these patients is that in the absence of a visible lesion where we would obviously carry out endoscopic resection, um, that when we have confirmed low-grade dysplasia, is that we can offer these patients ablation. And uh, historically, field ablation has been uh, based on argon, uh, more recently with the hybrid APC, which that means that you risk the reduce of uh, you, re you reduce the risk of stenosis. Um, but by far the most extensively studied uh, ablative technique is is radiofrequency ablation (RF), which now has almost a decade of data, which shows that you get this pulse of uniform RF ablation, which obliterates the top five to six, 600 microns of the Barrett's. Um, and we have published extensively to show that at 12 months it has a high eradication rate. And so what we're going to be doing in this patient with confirmed low-grade dysplasia is we're just going to be showing you how we would use uh, radio frequency ablation uh, by equipment made by, by Medtronic, which is the 
uh, uh, the, the Barex system using the halo uh, uh, catheters to, uh, to perform radio frequency ablation. So uh, what we will do is we'll come out and we'll do the, the halo procedure or we'll do some more, uh, more optics. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back. Um, so what we're going to do on this gentleman with the Barrett's esophagus now is to do radio frequency ablation. Um, and what we're going to be using is these uh, uh, ablation casters made by Medtronic. So this is a focal ablation caster. Um, it's called the Halo 90. Um, and I'm just going to show you with the, uh, with the, the camera is that um, this is uh, mounts onto the top of the endoscope. Um, it has a surface area of uh, 20 by... Uh, by, by 13 millimeters and if I just come very close you can begin to see there these electrodes which are tightly spaced and what happens is when you oppose this to the esophageal tissue you get a pulse of radio frequency energy uh, which is a very controlled ablation and one of the benefits of this over argon or laser um, or electro cautery is that you get a very uniform depth of invasion uh, of, of ablation um, uh, and you can cover quite big areas very quickly so this is just one of several focal casters there's also a smaller one called the halo 60 there's a longer one called the ultra and what you do ladies and gentlemen is this mounts over the tip of your endoscope like so um, and so when you uh, get it on, you want to make sure that it sits in the, in the 12 o'clock position. Um, and then another very important thing is not to lubricate the, the catheter with jelly. You want to just use a little bit of water. Um, and, and, and it's as simple as that. And then what happens is you can see Natalia, who is my glamorous assistant today, um, we have the, the Barex catheter uh, generator here, which I don't know if you can see, made by, um, by Medtronic. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go down to uh, the, uh, the Barrett segment and then we'll connect up the catheter, if you don't mind now, Natalia. Sometimes intubating with this can be a little bit tricky. Um, that's why you want deep sedation. And then we're connected. And now we've done many st studies looking at the various dosimetries of the, the different types of ablation catheter. Um, and more recently, we have looked at um, uh, the focal ablation catheters, and we now use 12 joules per centimeter squared. Um, and what we do is we do three consecutive ablations to obliterate all of the Barrett's mucosa. So, Natalia, if you can please connect the, the catheter, you can see here, and it automatically will connect to 12 joules, and this is ready. And then the next step is to start your ablation. So you, what you want to do is you want to overlap the ablation at the gastroesophageal junction. So you want to start a circumferential ablation just here, just above the cardia. And what you do is you suck the mucosa in, and you'll hear the generator beep three times. I have a foot pedal here and you do three consecutive ablations and then when you pull off you can see this very nice uniform ablative uh, area and then what you want to do basically is you just work around the cardia by just overlapping very slightly and again you just oppose the tissue by sucking down bringing the scope tip all the way down and you can just circumferentially work around the cardia here and ablate quite a big area really very quickly. And one of the benefits of this procedure is that one, it's very quick. Um, unlike APC, for example, you have complete visibility of where you're ablating uh, and where you're not ablating. Uh, and in addition to that, um, you tend to have very little bleeding. Uh, and for example, if you're now um, doing APC on a patient like this, sometimes they get a lot of air and distension and they can become very uncomfortable. Uh, and one of the benefits of this, I just want to move this around.
Коллеги, коллеги, те из вас, кто был в предыдущие годы, когда подобную манипуляцию выполнял но с помощью аргоноплазменной коагуляции профессор Рихан Хайдри, вы, наверное, помните, как это выглядело и по продолжительности. Необходимо было снимать коагуляционный струб. Здесь все происходит гораздо быстрее. Дозированная подача импульсов и равномерная абляция слизистой оболочки. Поэтому это новая технология. Мы здесь ее в этой аудитории еще не, не видели в Ярославле. Ну вот, всегда элемент нового привносится в нашу программу. Поэтому будем, будем считать, что... Каким образом вы обрабатываете окружность, поворачивая тело эндоскопа? При этом по пациент, положение пациента на столе не меняется. Андрей Михайлович, положение пациента мы не меняем. Рихан Хади вращает аппарат и таким образом меняет положение датчика. Yeah, Um, circumferentially all the way into the cardia. So that's a difficult bit. And then what you do is you just come up and then you can ablate the rest of the Barrett's uh, just almost like you're painting the esophagus just by overlapping the areas that you've treated. You don't want to overlap too much because we know that if you over ablate these patients then the risk of stenosis and stricturing goes up. Um, uh, but the, once you've done the GOJ Really, th this, this, this next bit is really very straightforward and you can overlap it. You can treat a very big area very quickly and you can see how clean the field is. You have complete control. Um, and one of the other things that you don't see is on the generator, and Natalia, maybe you can help, is you see the, the amount of energy delivered. Um, and that re corresponds to the apposition of the electrodes to the tissue and you can see it says 100% and sometimes if the catheter has a lot of coagulum that falls down and it means that you need to come out and you need to clean uh, the, the catheter. So you can see here ladies and gentlemen we're nearly finished. Um, the, the focal ablation catheters that we're using now we used to historically do a treatment with 15 joules where we did a cleaning step in between Now we've abandoned that and we just do the sequential uh, 12 joules 3 and you can do up to 80 ablations, uh, 8 zero before then the catheter will, uh, will, will stop working and the generator will tell you to choose. So you can treat quite extensive areas very quickly um, in really a very, very short period of time. So we're nearly all the way around here and then sometimes here if I get a bit stuck, what I do is I switch to just uh, air And you can see with the iScan OE, it helps differentiate the areas that you've treated and the areas that need retreating. So you can um, use your enhanced imaging just to help guide the therapy here. So we'll see over here, there's just a few more areas that need treating. So these patients in my unit will get this treatment with conscious sedation. Um, we keep them in recovery maybe for an hour afterwards until uh, they're okay. They normally get quite a lot of pain afterwards. So we give them just, you know, things like paracetamol. They go home the same day. 
And then um, the important thing is in terms of dietary restrictions, we tell them to go on a soft diet for a week. Um, it's a very mushy food. Uh, we give them a high dose of acid suppression and ranitidine at night. We also give them sacralphate. Um, the risk of stenosis and stricturing with this is about 10%, but it's really, really very uncommon. Um, and then the patients come back at about three months' time for a repeat upper endoscopy, and normally there'll be a few residual islands of Barrett's left, and they'll need another... Uh, another ablation. So you can see, ladies and gentlemen, just in the space of 10 minutes, we've managed to get quite a nice circumferential ablation of the Barrett's. And when this patient comes back in three months' time, you will expect this all to have formed a, a, a nice near squamous uh, mucosa. Um, so uh, we, will, uh, we will come out now and take any questions from the, the floor. Андрей Михайлович, есть ли какие-то вопросы из аудитории? Ну, еще такой вопрос. Если через три месяца обнаруживаются остатки, то есть резидуальной э, пищевода барыта слизистой оболочки, предпринимается ли повторное, э, используется ли для этого снова этот девайс, или э, поскольку на верной площади которые не были проконтролированы небольшие, можно применять аргоноплазменную коагуляцию. Uh, the question from the audience is uh, if uh, uh, during the three months follow-up you will find some area of uh, residual barrage esophagus, what uh, technique will you perform? Uh, radiofrequency ablation again or yeah. you will choose just uh, uh, argonplasm coagulation? So in our center we use a lot of radiofrequency ablation and all the studies that we've done have shown that in most patients with Barrett's that is five, six centimeters long, they will need three courses of RFA treatment. Now, often with patients like this gentleman who has a short area of Barrett's, when he returns, there will just be a few tiny islands and it doesn't make sense to use the RFA. It's very expensive um, and APC is enough. But in, in the patients with a longer segment of Barrett's, you will often find that you need to use the RFA two, three times before all of the Barrett's has regressed. Um, and saying that also in the patients with the, the longer segment of Barrett's, we have the circumferential balloon, which can ablate a lot, lot quicker and a lot longer areas. Is there any other questions? Thank you very much. We congratulate you with the success of the chirurgical endoscopic Спасибо. Спасибо. Переключаемся.